Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I began to look at Exodus chapter 15. And I, and you know, as I began to read it, and it begins to show how powerful God is. Amen. How God, the mighty God, sent Moses to Egypt. He met a massive empire. And all he did to overcome an empire was by the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Isn't that amazing? And you know what? God has given us his word as well. Amen. You know, as I began to read it, look at it. You look at Exodus chapter 15. Before we start Bible studies this morning, I want us to look at, look at, let's look at this. Amen. Exodus 15. You know, sometimes it's better for us to look through the word and know by revelation the God that we serve. Amen. Hallelujah. Not sometimes, all the time. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes people say, I don't know who God is. I, I've not seen him. I don't know. But if you want to know him, if you want to know his voice, if you want to know his mind, if you want to know everything about him, get into his word. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, what, look at this. It says, then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord and spake, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its riders he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him, my father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariot and his army he has cast into the sea. His chosen captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. The, they, they, they sank to the bottom like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord. Lord. Brother James was talking about the right arm of the Lord. Amen. And the Bible is showing us here. It says the right hand of the Lord has become glorious in power. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> That's Jesus. The name of Jesus. Amen. Bro, karaba, shakaraba. The name of Jesus. The Bible says he sat down at the right hand of the Father in the place of authority and power. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, he says, um, where is it? Where is that? Where is that? Where is that? What verse is that? Where's that? Okay, yeah. He says, your right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has dashed the enemy in pieces. Hey, hallelujah. And in the greatness of your excellency, hallelujah, you have overthrown those who rose up, who rose against you. You sent forth your wrath. It consumed them like stubble. And with the blast of your nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood upright like a heap. The depth congealed in, his, in, in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue. I will overtake. I will divide the spoil. My desire shall be satisfied on them. I will draw my sword. My hand shall destroy them. You, oh God, you blew with your wind. That's is the, with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? You blew with your wind. The sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods who is like you, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. You stretch out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. You in your mercy have led forth the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them in your strength to your holy habitation. The people will hear and be afraid. Sorrow will take hold of the inhabitants of Philistia. Then the chiefs of Edom will be dismayed. The mighty men of Moab, trembling, will take hold on them. All the inhabitants of Canaan will melt away. Fear and dread will fall on them. By the greatness of your arm, they will be as still as a stone till your people pass over. O oh Lord, till the people pass over whom you have purchased. The Bible says we have been purchased by the blood. Amen. We have been purchased by the blood. Amen. It says, you will bring them in and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance. In the place, O Lord, which you have made for your own dwelling. 
the sanctuary, O Lord, which your hand have established, hallelujah, which your hand has established, the Lord shall reign forever. You know, the sanctuary of the Lord now is me and you. Amen. Why? Because the Holy Spirit lives in us. Because the Bible says we are the Lord's habitation. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Lord shall reign forever and ever. For the horses of Pharaoh went with his chariot and his horsemen into the sea. And the Lord brought back the waters of the sea upon them. But the children of Israel went on dry land in the midst of the sea. Hallelujah. The Bible says, then Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took the tambourine in her hand and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dances and Mariam answered them sing to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea hallelujah praise God you know if you want to praise God if you want to give him glory you take his word he says I'm looking for such who will worship him who will worship me? He says, he says, the time has come when the true worshiper will worship in spirit and in truth. What's truth? The word of God. So you take the word of God and worship God with his word. Amen. You take his word and you worship him with his word. Hallelujah. If you sometimes it's like, I don't have enough words. Our words are not enough. Open the word of God. And begin to worship him. Say, Lord, you are my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? You are the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the enemy, even my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, in this will I be confident. Lord, I am confident in you. Lord, I trust in you. I will trust in you, O God, the Lord of my salvation. Amen. The Lord reigneth. Blessed be the Lord. Let the rock of my salvation be exalted. The Lord reigneth. Blessed be the rock. Let the rock of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised? Hey! Who shall I be saved from my enemy? The Lord reigneth. Let us be the Lord. Let the rock of my salvation be exalted. Hey, the Lord reigneth. Let us be the Lord. Let the rock of my salvation be exalted. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. God is good. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, God gives us, he's giving us his word so that we can even worship him with his word. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. When you're short of words, open the word of God. Open the book of Psalms. Look at those worship praises of David. This, the Bible says, it says, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Amen? So you know it's the breath of God. So you take the breath of God, you take the inspired word of God, and you worship him with the word of God. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus. Glory be to God. Last week, um, we looked at... Glory be to God. We looked at the word that we are created by the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And we said, you see, we said um, we were going to memorize the scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. And I don't know whether we remember. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether we remember. Second, Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verses 17 and 18. Amen. Did we remember that? Yeah. Okay. So today is your exams. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And I know Brother Arnold is itching. <laughs> Brother Arnold is itching to say his, amen. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Amen. Amen. Say that again. Um, what did you say? Uh, in Christ, I did memorize it. Uh, and uh, what was it? And um, there is no combination for those who are in, in Christ. Uh, oh, dear, 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 dear. I've been doing it all week. <laughs> <laughs> um, therefore, there is no combination for those who are in Christ. Mm. Behold, all things have become... Ah, he's a new creation. Behold, yes. all things have become new. Yes. Um, and God has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is a reconciliation through Jesus. And this is the ministry we have through Jesus Christ. Amen, 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 amen. Let's 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 give him a clap. Let's give... God bless you, brother Arnold. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody wants to try? Anybody wants to try? Anybody wants to try? <clears throat> yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Lord, have become new. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Let everyone, let everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's it. <laughs> oh, God. Um, Second Corinthians yes. 5, verse 17 to 18. Yes. Um, from the um English Standard Version. Okay. Therefore. <laughs> Therefore, um, anyone in Christ, anyone in Christ is a new creation. Mm -hmm. Be all, all things, be all, all things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. Um, through through Christ who gave himself, mm -hmm. we we through Christ who gave himself reconcile us to recreate reconciliate to. Ourself to ministry of reconciliation. Amen. 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 Let's give her a car. At least she cried. Amen. Some of you were running away, but she 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 took the microphone. She was both to try. Anybody want to try one more time? <laughs> okay, let's go. Now. Let's go. Let's say this together. Now. Sorry. Therefore. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creation. He is a new creation. All things are passed away. All things are passed away. Behold, behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to Himself through Jesus Christ. And has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God. Who has reconciled us unto himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation now all things are of god who has reconciled us to himself through jesus christ and has given us 
the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. You know, let us do that. When we're doing our Bible studies, let's try and memorize scripture. That's how you do with you. You can take a particular verse that the Holy Spirit just, it jumps at you as you're, watch, as you're um, studying the scripture. Something, you know, when we're studying the scriptures, the scripture comes alive. And you take those scriptures, you write them down. Then sometimes you can put the paperwork in your wallet. When you're at work, you can just open them. Just read them and try to memorize them because those words, you know, the word of God is living and active. It comes, stays into your spirit. And when you need them, the Holy Spirit reminds you. The Holy Spirit can only walk with what you have inside of you. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. And that's why you have to fill yourself with the word of God. Hallelujah. Don't just, uh, don't just be um, somebody that just come to church on Sunday and just hear the word and don't pick up the word again in the week. Or maybe you just want to tick the boxes that you've read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and none of it is actually inside you. Amen. You have to do everything you can to get the word inside you. Whether you're driving to work, you can play the audio Bible. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, it has tremendous effect, actually. It has very, because um, sometimes, because all the time when I'm going to work, I do books by books. So I will look at Genesis. And for that, throughout, I wouldn't just jump from here to there. I just like open, I just put the book of Genesis in there and just listen to it as I'm driving to work. And whenever I'm called to preach the word of God, and I begin to preach, then this, the word starts to come out of me, like, as if you're like, oh, Pastor G, how can you know? No, it's the Holy Spirit. It can't be, it's not by my strength, but you have to position yourself for the Holy Spirit to be able to bring out the word of God inside of you. And one of the way we position ourselves is by listening to the word of God. Let's, let's see what the Bible talks about this. Let's, let's open to Proverbs chapter 4. Amen. And I haven't started yet. I'm just, um, um, just giving us a word of exaltation. Amen. Praise the Lord. I didn't plan this anyway. But you see the word coming out again, yeah? This is exactly what I mean. That's just the Holy Spirit. When, when, you, when, you, when you spend time in the word and it's time for you to speak the word of God, to exhort the people with the word of God. The Holy Spirit will give you word that he wants the people to, he wants to, give, he wants to let the people hear. He wants to help the people grow because the word of God is what the Lord uses to build our lives. It's the building blocks of our spiritual life. Amen. It's the food for our spirit. And if the Holy Spirit is going to feed us, he's going to feed us through the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So it says in verses 20 of Proverbs chapter 4, it says, my son. Hallelujah. And you too, ladies. Amen. So don't say, oh, he's talking to only men here. No, he's talking to mankind. Mankind is both male and female. Amen. So it says, my son. Give attention to my words. Amen. Incline your ears to my saying. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. You see that? That's an instruction from the Holy Spirit. He says, my son, give attention. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, my son, attend. That means to hacking, amen, to give heed and to regard the word of God, amen. So he says, my son, attend to my word, incline thy ears to my saints. Do not let them depart from your eyes and keep them in the midst of your heart for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Did you see that? He says, there are conditions to this. People will always say, oh, yes, you know what? Um, yes, the word of God is health to my flesh. 
but there are conditions. There's a condition here. He says, my son, the condition is attend to my words, incline your ears to my saying, do not let them depart from your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Christ. So that's why it's good that we're here in the Bible studies because we're making an effort to make sure that we have the word of God in our hearts and we're hearing the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Last week, I was, um, I, I looked at some of the things. I said the word of God, the scriptures are Old Testament. Um, is the Old Testament. When you see Paul speaking in 2, Chron 2 Timothy 3.16, he says all scriptures is given by the inspiration of God. He's speaking of the Old Testament scriptures. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The New Testament as well is scripture because it is from the Old Testament that the inspiration of the New Testament came out from. It was the word that was hidden concealed in the old and revealed in the new. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You will look at Paul, for example. Paul the apostle, before he became an apostle, he knew the scriptures. Amen. He was a Pharisee of all Pharisees. Amen. He knew it. He knew the scripture. He was, he was actually, he was persecuting the Christians because he thought the Christians were going against scriptures. But Knowing scripture without the Holy Spirit, knowing scripture without the Holy Spirit becomes a religion. Amen? It becomes man's effort, man's effort to know in the scriptures. And that is why you see that the greatest deception that we have today, the greatest deception, the people that deceive people, the people in the occult, they know the word. Because it is through that word they use in deceiving people because they are not inspired by the Holy Spirit. Amen? So you can't have the word of God without the spirit. You can't have the word, you have to see, they have to be together, the word and the spirit. We looked at Psalm 33 last week. It says, by the word of God, the heavens were made and the host of it by the breath by his breath, amen? So the word breath there we said is the word used as the Holy Spirit. The same word that was used spirit in Genesis. So we see also in the beginning, Genesis chapter one, let's open our Bibles to it, let's have a look at it, amen? Let's open our Bibles to Genesis chapter one. Genesis chapter one. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah for the love that I see Hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty Ray. Amen. Hallelujah. Please just bear with me. I'm just having a moment with the Lord right now. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He says here, in Genesis chapter 1 and verses 2, it says, in the beginning, let me start from 1. In the beginning, it says, God created heaven and the earth. Genesis chapter 1 and verses 1 and 2. It says, the earth, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, amen, we see the first introduction of the Holy Spirit in the book of Genesis, amen. The first introduction of the Holy Spirit here, it says, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. So you can see the Spirit and the Word together, even in the book of the beginning. Any doctrine that you find in the Word of God, any doctrine whatsoever, every true doctrine, Find that if you go and study it, you'll find it in Genesis. It began from Genesis. Do you want to talk about Jesus? Genesis 3.50. And that seed, we crush his head and he shall bruise his heel. That's Jesus. The ministry of the Holy Spirit, Genesis 1-2. Evil spirit, where did they come from? Genesis chapter 6. 
sons of God had an affair with the daughters of men and they gave birth to giants. And when they, after the flood, they were wiped out out of the face of the earth, but their spirit was still wandering. That's, that's, that's where the evil spirit originated from. Ministry of angels, Genesis talks about angels. So every doctrine that you find in the word of God, you will find it in Genesis. It began. That's why it's called the book of the beginning. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Sin, Genesis. Baptism, Genesis. Amen. Redemption, Genesis. Because God gave us the plan of redemption from Genesis as well. That's what we said in Genesis chapter 3 and verses 15. Amen. That was the solution to redemption for mankind. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So where was I? So we see here that in the introduction, the word and the spirit, you can't separate them. If you know too much of the word, you can miss it. You puffed up with wisdom. If you have only the spirit, you can blow up. <laughs> Amen. That's why you see some people when they say, I want to hear from God. I want God to speak to me. The most primary way that we hear from God, that God has provided for us, is through his word. Amen. If you don't know the word, it will be difficult for you to know who God is. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So we, we talked about it last week that um, we said the word and the spirit. We looked at Gen um, Psalms 33 verses 5 and 6. I think so. Yeah, verses 5. Let me just be sure for those who are writing their notes. So they don't say, Pastor Gabriel, you, that scripture doesn't match. Yeah, verse 6. It says, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. So the word breath there, it means it's the word roach. We know in the, the Hebrew word for roach, excuse me, is the spirit. Hallelujah. Is the Holy Spirit. The same word that was used for spirit in Genesis chapter 1. Go and look at your Hebrew dictionary. The same word that was used. For, for the spirit in Genesis is the same word that is used for breath in the book of Psalm. So the Bible is telling us that by the word of God, the heavens were made and the host of it by the breath of his mouth. So when God said, let there be light, the spirit was hovering and God said, let there be light. And there was light. Amen. So you with the Holy Spirit, inspired with the, by the power of the Holy Spirit. When the word of God is your mouth and you speak it, it's as God speaking the word. Amen? You don't believe that? When you speak the word by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, it's as God speaking the word. Amen? Do you believe that? Do you think that's true? Okay, let's find out. You know, we don't just say things and we don't have scripture to back it up. Amen. So open your Bible to Ezekiel chapter 37. Amen. I don't know the way the Holy Spirit is taking me this evening. I'm not even starting my notes, you know. Ezekiel chapter 37. Are we there? The inspired word of God, when we talk about inspired word of God, we can say it is prophecy or prophesying, amen? When you prophesy, it means you're speaking the inspired word of God. The word that you've been inspired by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So he says, yeah, he says, the hand of the Lord was upon me and I and brought me out in the spirit and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around and behold, there were very many in the open valley and indeed they were very dry. 
And he said to me, son of man, can this bone live? So I answered, oh Lord, you know, amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, Ezekiel was saying that I don't have the word, I don't have anything in me that can change this situation. But Lord, you know better, amen. Then he goes, again, he said to me, now he's receiving what? Instruction, amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, and he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them. Who is telling Ezekiel to prophesy? Hello? Sorry, I can't hear. Who? God. 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 By his spirit. Because the Bible says in the day, it, was, it says, I was carried away. I was brought out in the, spirit, in the spirit of the Lord. Amen. So this is Ezekiel and the spirit of God. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So, so we, we, we know that Ezekiel was in the spirit. Hallelujah. So he said, again, that's why we have to be in the spirit at all times. You know, when you, when you, when you pray and ask God, that I'm going to mount the pulpit and I'm going to speak his word. I'm going to speak your word, Lord, to the people. Don't think that the word you have, you've spoken that day, because there could be, out of so many words, there could be a word, out of so many words that you could have spoken that day. But God chose that you speak certain words. So whenever you're speaking or whenever you're teaching through God's word, know that it is not your word. When you believe and trust and know that the spirit of God is working in you, you have to have that consciousness. Never ever go to minister the word of God without the consciousness that you are being used by the spirit. Amen? Amen. You have to know that you are being used, you have been, you're speaking by the Spirit of God, and the word that the God and that the word that the Lord is giving to you is to liberate people. Amen. It's to liberate people. That's the call that God has called us to. That's why He is giving us the word, is to liberate people that are in oppression, people that are a, that have been held captive. Jesus Christ says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, just like the Spirit of God was upon Ezekiel. He says, Because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captive and the recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised. So if you are anointed by the Lord, you are anointed to do these things and he will do it through his word. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So it says here, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He said here, he says, prophesy to these bones and say to them, Oh, dry bone. Hear what? What did he say she hear? Did he say, oh, hear the word of Ezekiel? No. He says, hear the word of the Lord. So when I say that the word of God in your mouth, being inspired by the spirit, is as God speaking. Because it's God's word in your mouth, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says we have in the same spirit of faith. Amen. We also have in the spirit of faith. Hallelujah. We believe. Therefore, we speak. You also believe and you speak. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So he says, oh, dry bone, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord. So he's paraphrasing what God said to him. Amen. Thus said the Lord God to these bones. Surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. And I will put signs in you and bring flesh upon you. Cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesy as I was commanded. Amen. 
I prophesy as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise and a sudden rattling, and the bones came together, bones for bones. That's why when a man of God is stood there and is prophesying over you, it is not his word that is prophesying over you. He's prophesying as he's being inspired by the word of God. And only certain people <laughs> catch it in the spirit and they run with it and they say yes this is my word i run with it they're not looking at the man they're looking at the spirit behind that man amen praise the lord jesus christ they're looking at the spirit they can sense the spirit that's why you know you can't get too familiar with people sometimes when you get too familiar with people you get too familiar with them you're like oh just like i said is he not that son of the carpenter I say, God, Jesus Christ could not do mighty things, even in his own hometown, because they despised him. Amen? So that's why when we come to hear the word, we prepare our heart and mind for the word of God. Amen? For the word of God. And listen with the, with the ear of the spirit. Listen and, 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 and just listen with the eye of the Spirit. Listen with the ear of the Spirit and see with the eye of faith. And take the word of God and run with it. Amen. In fact, before you leave, you have to be praying for the man of God. Say, Lord, speak through this man. There is a word that you have for me. And I want to hear through this man that is about to preach. You make things easier for you that way because now you come in and you're waiting inclining attending to god's word inclining to his saying so that's how you receive from god through his word amen you're coming with expectation you know when i go to meetings or when i'm going to conference or when i'm going i just say to the lord lord i want to hear from you i take my eyes off the man of god but i'm looking at you Lord, speak through this vessel of yours. So I pray that prayer before I leave home. I pray, so in fact, when I'm going for conference or those three days conference or even Sunday service, you can do that too. Just say, Lord, I want to hear you speak. There is a word, there is a rhema for me. There is a word that you need to speak because your word is your contact to me. And you pray that prayer before you leave home. You prepare. And you come and you wait. The Bible says, you know, was it, was it um, Habakkuk? Habakkuk chapter 2. What did he say? Open to Habakkuk 2. This is how you know a man that is waiting on the Lord. Amen? Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk, Habakkuk 2. Look at what it says in verses 1. What did he say? If you, yeah. I will what? I will stand my watch, yes? And set myself on a rampart, amen? Yes. Praise the Lord. It says, I will wait. I will stand my watch and set myself in a rampant, on a rampant. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me. Mm -hmm. Yes. I will what? carry on. I will climb up to my watchtower. Amen. And stand at my guard post. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There I will wait to see what the Lord says and how he will answer my complaint. That's it. So you will wait. Some people say, Lord, I want to hear from you. Lord, talk to me. I need to hear from you. And they are in church and they're preaching the word of God. 
and they despise that one, and they want to hear God when they are sitting down on their own without the word of God. It's like, Lord, speak to me. Lord, speak to me. The clearest way God can speak to you is through his word, written word. If you learn how to listen to God through his written word, you will know when he speaks when you're not reading his word because you'll be able to identify which is true and which is not true. Amen? You're able to hear him. You're able to discern through his written word whether that's the voice of God or whether that is the voice of the enemy because the enemy speaks, your mind speaks, and you hear other people's voices. But sometimes God can speak through other people's voices, but you can only find out whether it is true only if you know the word of God. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. So, Psalms chapter 19 and verses 119. And Proverbs chapter 30, verses 5 and 6. I'll say that again. Psalms 19. Psalms 119. And Proverbs chapter 3. Write those scriptures down so that you can go back home and look at them. So I say Psalms 19. Psalms 119, Proverbs chapter 30, verses 5 and 6, makes powerful statements about God's word. Setting it apart from any other religious writing or instruction in the history of mankind. Amen? These passages makes the case for the Bible being called secret. We see this in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verses 15. We've read it before, amen, but you can just write it down. And holy, the word of God, it says the word of God, the Bible is also holy in Romans chapter 1 and 2. Hallelujah. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 30 and verses 5. Are we there? Proverbs chapter 30 and verses 5. If you're there, you can read it. Amen. If you're there. Every word of God is pure. He Amen. Is a, Carry on. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. Amen. I want you, to, you've got to, I want you to observe something in that, in that verse. What did he say in the first, of, in the beginning of that scripture? He says every word of God, yeah, is what? Is pure. So what is that scripture trying to emphasize on? You know it, it's not a tricky question. What is he trying to emphasize on? Exactly. So he's trying to talk to us about the word of God, isn't it? Amen. But look at the next line. It personifies the word of God. Isn't it? It says here, he is a shield. Hallelujah. He is a shield. And unto, he is a shield, and unto them that put their trust in him. Hallelujah. So he tells us here, first of all, he tells us that the word of God is pure. The word of God cannot be, the word of God is inerrant. You know what that means? Yes, sir. It's just saying that the word of God um, is tried and found to be pure. In other words, there's no fault with it. That's right. It says there is no, pure, there's no fault with it. It's inerrant. That's what I mean. Inerrant, it means there's no error in the word of God. Hallelujah. There is no error in the word of God. The word of God is pure. 
It is dependable. That's why we're talking about the integrity of the word. Amen. You can depend on the word. Amen. Hallelujah. You can take the word of God. Somebody says you can take the word of God. You can bank on the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, if somebody come and meet you and tell you, for example, after you meditate on the, on the word and you know in your spirit that this word is for me, and they tell you, come, give me a proof that you are healed. What's your proof that you are healed? Hallelujah. A lot of people will say, um, yes, you can see it in my body that I'm healed. Yeah? That's my proof. Some people can say that. Some people say, doctor report says that. Amen. So, but when you have a doctor's report saying that you're healed, and the word of God had already said you're healed, and you're rejoicing because the doctor said you're healed. So, which one? Do you actually believe me? <laughs> Can you see it now? This is exactly what happened to Abraham. Hallelujah. Exactly what happened to Abraham. Abraham did not rejoice when Sarah actually gave birth to Isaac. He was giving glory to the promises of God. So this is why I said the word of God is pure. He is a shield to them that trust in him. You take the word of God and you rejoice. Just because you are not seeing anything in this physical doesn't mean there's nothing happening inside of you. Amen? Look at when Jesus spoke to the fig tree and when he cursed the fig tree. Amen? When did the fig tree or where did death begin? To happen to that fig tree. Where? From where? From where? From the roots. It started from the roots. When in the morning when they came back, they found out that the thing was dried up, but it began from the roots in the realm of the unseen. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That is faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtain a good report. Amen? Can you see how the word of God is power, so powerful? Some people, some people, they have their plan B. You have so many men of God, they have their own plan B. They say, ah, in this world we are living in, you have to have something extra, you know. <laughs> you know why they say that? Because they don't know the word of God. They've not encountered the word of God. When you encounter the word of God, when you know the word of God, nothing moves you. You're never fearful because you know the word. The word is God himself. He says, he says, he is a shield to them that trust in him. David puts it this way. He says, thy truth. He says, Psalms 91 verses 4. He says, oh, let me, let me, let me, let me look at it. Psalm 91. And verses four. It says, His truth shall be my shield and buckler. Amen. What shall be your shield and buckler? His truth. Thy word is truth. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Amen. You can go out of the house, driving your car, and declare the word of God ahead of you, and the word of God becomes your shield and buckler. Like the book of Proverbs says, it says, in the past, 
of the righteous, there shall be no death. You can take that word and run with it and nothing, you will go to work and come back home safely and nothing will touch you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the heart condition. The reason why a lot of people are not seeing the word of God work for them is their heart condition. It's the posture of their heart when it comes to the word of God. And God is the only one that sees that. Because faith is of the spirit, is of the heart. You see some people, it's like, hey, some people, they, 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 they trust the experience of people. So, for example, they say, look at that man of God. Hey, that man of God, he knows the word. He prays the word. He does this. And all of a sudden, he drove out and he had an incident and he died. And suddenly, fear comes, hey, he was a man of God. And he died. Hey, I'm not, a, I'm not a pastor like him. Or this and that. And they use other people's experience to form a belief for themselves. But your belief, irrespective of who the person is, your belief has to be formed purely from the word of God. Amen? Not by other people's experience. Because you don't know what their heart posture is. Only God knows what their heart posture is. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm not making mockery of anybody, any man of God. I'm not saying, I'm just, it's, it's, it's things that you've heard people say. They say, oh, that man of God, oh, the, oh, look at that man of God. He's a really good Christian. But how come all of a sudden he falls? Something happened to him. He did this and this. You know, remember what the Bible says, says let him who think at his standard take heed lest he fall. When we don't take heed to the word of God, he said, take heed to the word of God. When you take heed to the word of God, you won't fall. Amen? When you trust the word of God, don't let somebody try to wind you up to, don't say I'm believing the word of God because of that person. You're not doing it. It has to, you, you know, faith in the word. Let the word of God form your beliefs. Let it form your faith. Let it, let it grow your faith. This faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let the word of God be what helps you trust and stand firm on the word. That's why you have to give yourself to the word of God. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see it here. We say um, in Proverbs chapter 13, the verses 5, Five and six. Yeah. He says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee and thou be found a liar. That's why you have to preach the word of God. Because if you add to it, you'll be found a liar. Because no man's word can stand like the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm enjoying this, you know. My faith is being stirred up as I'm looking at this. You see, the word of God is stirring up my faith. Even as I'm speaking, you know, the word of God is double-edged, yeah? When you're speaking, it's coming back to you. Amen. It's double-edged. It's double-edged. Double one, it's like that. Yes, yeah, it's coming this way. Amen. Double-edged. So as it's hitting you, it's hitting me too. My faith is being stirred up. Ah, and my heart is rejoicing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So we can read all those other scriptures that I said we should look at. That Psalms 19, Psalms 119. Psalms 19 is actually a very good one. You know, there's a place in there. It talks about how the word of God is tried. And, you know, just, just look at it. It's, it's amazing. Amen. Hallelujah. So it says the Bible claims ultimate spiritual authority. I want us to put this down as well. The Bible claims ultimate spiritual authority in doctrine, reproof, correction, 
and instruction in righteousness. Because it represents the inspired word of Almighty God. Amen. Second Timothy 3, 16 to 17. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Last paragraph. Scripture asserts its spiritual sufficiency. So much that it claims exclusivity for its teaching. Amen. It claims exclusivity for its teaching. Two scriptures. Isaiah 55, 11. Second Peter 3 to 4. Let somebody open to Isaiah chapter 55, verses 11. Hallelujah. What does it say? So shall they, my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing wherefore I sent it. Okay. He says, so shall it be the word that goeth forth out of my mouth. Yeah? I want to ask you a question. When God says, so shall it be the word that goeth forth out of his mouth. If God tells you and says this word i want you to go and speak to these people does that mean is does it mean that god is also saying that if you take that word that he has spoken to you to go and speak his word that is given to you to go and speak just because it's coming from you does it make the word void huh does he make the word of God void because it's coming from you? No. Exactly. Okay. I want us to look at Isaiah chapter 55. Let us have a discussion about it. Speak about it. What does this, what does this say? I want you to look at that scripture. Have a two minutes discussion about Isaiah chapter 55 and verses one and come up with something that the Lord is, what, what's the Lord saying in there? Amen. Just, you know, in twos, in threes, you know, talk to each other about it. Amen. Isaiah chapter 55 and verses 11. I'll give you two minutes. Amen. Two minutes.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How are we doing? How are we doing? Are we there? What did you come up with? Um, uh, from verse 10, it is um, joined the analogy that as the rain comes, mm -hmm. rain and snow, and it waters and um, seed grows, and um, there is bread to the eater, mm -hmm. just saying that um, the word of God can be created um, in such manner. Amen. That once it comes from out of the mouth, it does not return empty. But it will be saved. Amen. Souls will be saved and we, the kingdom of God will build up. So the word of God will not return void, but it will eat um, good soil and produce fruits. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Anybody else? Yes. They, they the words. Yes. They, they are the words of the most powerful being in the universe. And that's mm -hmm. how he created things by his word. Yes. Mm. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Anybody else? It says, just as you speak the word of God, mm -hmm. um, whatever you sent it out mm -hmm. to do, that word that you speak, it produces fruit. Amen. And it will accomplish what you want it, what you send it out to do. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, it is God's word, so mm -hmm. it's nothing of ourselves. It's his mm -hmm. uh, complete um, and full word. So we don't have to rely on ourselves because he waits to perform his word. And God believes his word will manifest. He says, so shall my word be, like it will happen, like he, he is a faith God. When he spoke, there was no question. So, we, so when we speak the word of God, his words, we need to have that say when we speak with those, that um, faith that it will come, then it's, again, it will bear, it will bear fruit. And also that he, he has a will for his word. Um, for it said, um, but it shall accomplish what I please. Sometimes we might not know, actually know what the w the will of God is for that word, but he knows. Sometimes we speak to people and we might not know, you know, we might not think, we not have no idea what that word, why we've been told to speak that word, but it accomplishes his will. Okay. What, what would you think? Why would God... In that particular verse of the scripture, why would he make such statement? Why do you think God would make such statement? Lives within us. Mm -hmm. And the word is, once we work with the word and the spirit, then we are able to accomplish whatever is God's will. You're very correct. But why? God wouldn't just say, so shall it be the word that goeth forth out of my mouth. There must be a reason why he's saying that. What do you think that might be? They have a disbelief and the spirit of the Lord when he speaks. It speaks, it's not turning back into him, but the work is done. Amen. He's basically... The reason why he's saying that is for us to be able to trust his word. He's, he's emphasizing that truth to us so that we might know how powerful his word is and so that we might know the integrity of his word. His word never fails. You know the reason why I said we should talk about this? Because... These are some of the ways we hear the Holy Spirit speak to us when we're, when we're studying the word of God. You need to pause. Ask yourself a question. Why is he saying this? Why is God using certain things of nature 
to describe his word because he knows that's the language you understand first of all and he knows you will come to an understanding because your you, your day to day activity involves rain coming down from the sky and the farmer loves the rain when the rain falls his seed what happens to his seed he brings forth fruit hallelujah praise the lord just breaking it down for us and again he's giving us that reassurance that we can depend on his word hallelujah so when the holy spirit says it, you see lord why are you telling me this i'm telling you this so that you can trust my word so what do you do you act on the instructions that he has given you and you go on to his word and when he tells you something you always remember so shall it be the word that goeth forth out of his mouth it prosper in the things where it is sent to amen praise the lord jesus christ he says so shall it be the word that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which i please amen and it shall prosper in the things where to I sent it. Word for healing, when it is sent, it accomplishes. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. When the word of God is sent to you, you're being transformed. You heard the gospel of Christ. It was sent to you and it really accomplished that which is sent forth. Then you turn to the word. You gave your heart to Jesus Christ. You become born again because that's what the word of God is for. It says we are born again, not of corruptible seed, but of seed incorruptible by the word of God. You heard it. You came to Jesus Christ. You accepted him. You confessed him as your Lord and Savior. You received his righteousness and you made a confession unto salvation. You see, that's what the word of God accomplishes. When it is sent forth, it does what it's sent forth to do. He accomplishes it. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Second Peter chapter one. We'll soon finish now. Second Peter chapter one and verses. Three and four. I want us to also look at this again. I want us to see something in here. Second Peter chapter one, verses one. Second Peter chapter one, verses three to five. Yeah. What does it say? Second Peter chapter one, verses three and four. It says, according as his divine power has given us all things that pertains to life and godliness. Okay, let's wait for you. Second Peter, we'll wait, we'll wait. Second Peter chapter one and verses three and five. You can read if you want to, you know. Second Peter chapter three, chapter one, verses three and four. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is the world through lust. You see that? It says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. So we find God's exceeding, we find God's exceeding great and precious promises where? In the word. So he's saying that God has given us exceeding great and precious promises that by this, through this exceeding great and precious promises, that by this will be what? Partakers of the divine nature. So we know that our nature is changed through these precious promises. Therefore, if a man is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. 
behold, all things have become new. So you are a new creature because of the precious promises that he has given unto us. Amen. Then he says, of his own will, James 1, 18, begat he us by the word of truth that we may be a kind of first fruit of his creation. So we are a first fruit of his creation. Why? Precious promises. He's given us this. So we're a kind of first fruit. It means that we're a different breed. You know, let me tell you something. Let's, let me take you back to Genesis chapter 6. You remember what happened in Genesis chapter 6? That mankind was upon the face of the earth. The Bible says the daughters of men and the sons of God, they decided that they were going to have affairs with the daughters of men. So fallen angels, they left their habitation. They know it's forbidden to have anything to do with the daughters of men. They decided to have an affair with them, to have a um, sexual relationship with them. Then they gave birth to a certain breed of mankind, which the Bible called giants. But this was from fallen angels. This was from fallen angels. And if you see the thing that those, those giants, they did, they more, they're kind of havoc. They caused upon the face of the earth that God had to wipe them out with the flood. Right? Then we have the word of God. The spirit of God was involved in our spiritual birth. They had never been any kind of people of such on the face of the planet of the earth. Then we heard the gospel. We believe the Lord Jesus Christ. Then the Bible says that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That was the kind of beings they had on earth at the time. And it says that which is born of the Holy Spirit is spirit. So we are a different breed of creation. We can trace our DNA, the DNA that is in our spirit, back to God. That's who we are. <laughs> Amen. He says we are first fruit of his creation. No wonder the Bible says the whole world is waiting for the manifestation, for the full revelation of the sons of God. Hey, look, you have to ask the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, please, Holy Spirit, teach me and reveal to me what this really means. To my spirit. We're not meant to live ordinary lives. The ministry that God has called us is to be an extension of the ministry of Jesus. And the Bible says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who went about doing good. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good. Healing those who are oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. And he said, he says, as my father has called me, so have I called you also. And he says, greater things than this you shall do. Amen. Don't look at yourself the way the world looks at you or tells you you are. You see, this is why I say the word of God is important because the word of God is like a manual. You begin to find some specifications, like you find specifications in your new car when you buy your new car and you open it and you're like, I've been driving this for five years and I didn't even know this was in there. I didn't know that was there. I didn't know this was there. That's what happens. As you begin to look at the word of God, that's why God is telling us to focus on his word so that we can see what he has put in us. When we allow the Holy Spirit, that's why Paul began to pray that prayer in Ephesians 1, 17, that the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ may give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eye of our understanding be enlightened, that we may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints is. 
and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. The same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is the same power that is at work in me and you. And Paul is praying, he's saying that the God of our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, may give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. I want us to rise up and let's pray that prayer before we go home. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I want us to just begin to pray from Ephesians chapter 1 and verses 17 and verses 19. I want us to begin to pray right now. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have taught us tonight about your word. You've taught us about your word. You've taught us about how powerful you are, how you and your spirit are one. And that we have been born of your word and you've given us your spirit. Lord, we pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation, O oh God, in the knowledge of you. That the eye of our understanding be enlightened. That we may know what is the hope of your calling and what the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of your power towards us who believe according to the working of your mighty power, which you wrought in Christ when you raised us. Raised him from the dead. Hallelujah. Mando Zika Lema Zobra do Jeke de Benende. Lenge de Maso Toli Baraga Baso Bregede. Come on, come on. Pray, 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 pray tonight. Lord, we pray that you will fill us with that revelation that we might take our place as sons and daughters of God. Oh, Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father God, we haven't scratched the surface. Father God, we ask that you reveal to us, oh God. No wonder when the disciples went to the beautiful gate and they saw the man crippled. It says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the Bible says his ankle bones receive strength. Hallelujah, Lord, we pray tonight, oh Father that you will begin to show us, we will receive revelation, that we might go out and, and continue in the name of Jesus, in the ministry that you have called us, that, our, that, that whatever ministry, whatever, whatever area you have called us will be an extension of your ministry to the world in the name of Jesus. Your word says we are the light of the world and the salt of the earth in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray for you to anoint us afresh. Anoint us afresh, oh God. We ask for that with spirit of wisdom, oh God. The spirit of revelation in the knowledge of you oh god father god we don't want to be here for just for coming sake but lord we come to receive from you we come to receive from your word we've come to have contact with your word in the name of the lord jesus christ oh man lord we come to have an encounter with your word lord we want to have a, a, a weekly encounter in our bible studies with your word oh god in the name of jesus Lord, for those who are watching us on YouTube, for those that are watching us online, Father God, we pray they will experience the same encounter. They will receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, that the eye of their understanding be enlightened in the name of Jesus. So, Karabashata, Rabashata, Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus, uh, we pray for great transformation. Uh, we pray that you will fill them. You will fill us. You will strengthen us with mind by your spirit in the inner man. In the name of Jesus, that Christ may dwell in our hearts by faith. Uh, 
Oh, Father, your word says the whole creation is made waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Oh, Rabba, shake it, take it, take it, zo, take it, And as your word says, and my people shall be willing in the day of my power. Lord, we are willing in the day of your power. It is the last days, man, zembra, no, so Let the church of the Lord Jesus Christ arise and shine for the Lord, for the light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Though the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise unto thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee in the name of Jesus. Satatate, Mendelevo, and the Gentiles shall come to a light and kings to the brightness of our rising in the name of Jesus. So kata Mendeli, Rote, Zurado, Shile, Gredo, Zumbra, Nozu, Kaba, Mata, Kada, Vasegelevo, Shetelebel. Lord, we pray for every family. Everyone watching us live right now, oh Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, we extend your grace. We extend the power of your word, the power of the Holy Spirit to every home, to every family right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all. I am the head and not the tail. I am armed and dangerous, stoppable and unmovable with the power of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, no weapon that is formed against me or my family shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against me or my family in judgment, we shall condemn. This is the heritage of the children of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Shalom. Amen. Homework. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and two. I want us to go home, memorize that scripture, because next week we'll be talking about how the word of God renews our mind.